What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Now today I'm diving straight back into the Mark II Escort project and we're going to head inside to show you what I'm doing now. In the last episode I welded up the old left hand drive holes and yeah I was really happy with how they come out but the only thing is I'm just going to weld around the holes again on the inside. I'm basically following a bit of advice I was given um, because someone said if you weld them from the outside and on the inside then you can flush off the bit on the bay much more neater and you'll hardly need no filler at all so that's what I'm going to do and then once I've topped up these welds at the back I can go around and put some body sealant on them it's just belts and braces doing both sides really and also means I can get them a lot flusher in the engine bay Look how much of an improvement that's made. So the top loom hole I've welded up and yeah, really happy with that. Same with the bottom one here. I even got carried away and headed down to this little semicircle that has been welded into the steering column hole and I've put some more welds on that just to strengthen it up. Don't you just love having days off in the week? I'm gonna be starting a little section that I've been putting off for a little while, but we need to embrace the naivety and lack of knowledge and just get stuck in. Now this is something I haven't done before. I need to swap all the brackets inside from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. The person who owned this before had already bought the brackets, so I've got bits like this that I need to weld in. Just before I start, I thought I'd show you the finished results. I've now seam sealed and primered all of them holes that I filled up the other day. As I said, I've got loads of brackets for the interior that need welding on. Now this bracket is one from the original car, so this would be a left-hand drive one, but I'm not too sure if you need to swap this or not. So I'll soon find out once I start mocking it all up. The first thing I need to do is drill out the spot welds for what I believe is the old left hand drive wiper motor bracket and we need to remove that because I want to be welding in this new piece which is the steering column bracket which gets welded up here so obviously it's in the way yes get in there before I get carried away, I'm going to take Dad's advice and I'm going to weld up these holes because once I've fitted that bracket for the column, it's going to be quite hard to get behind and even to spray it. So I'm going to weld up these holes and at least I can put some seam sealer behind and spray them. All of my welds are now ground down. I think it's fair to say that that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna whack a little bit of weld through primer on this bit because the bulb's gonna go here. I put this black bracket in and it fits down here nice and snug. And then I just give the metal a little bit of a pull and both of these top bolts went in because I was struggling to get one of them in earlier. That's why I thought this might have been the wrong bracket. For instance, a left-hand drive bracket. But now it's all lined up. You can see this top bracket 
is obviously loose because it needs to be welded in, but that's all in place now. That was an exciting couple of hours trying to work out if that was the correct bracket, but as far as I can see, there's no difference between left-hand drive and right-hand drive ones, and it fits, so winner winner. Before I go ahead and weld in that bracket for the column, I've just started to strip down my steering column. Now I've stripped the column down, it's a lot easier to manoeuvre about. As I say, I want to test fit it to make sure everything's in the right place before I end up welding in that bracket. <laughs> I think I'm getting a little bit carried away with myself. Can you blame me though? I've been looking at this for months and we're starting to take shape. An actual steering column. There's only one way I know to celebrate and that's with a nice cold Dr Pepper. tastes like victory. Update time. I've stripped the column and all the brackets back off the Mark II Escort because I need to start drilling out the holes for the plug welds. This bracket has come with nothing. I've made some progress and I've pretty much copied all of the plug welds from the old left hand drive steering column bracket. Since I've drilled out these holes I feel a lot more confident in plug welding this because I was originally worried about how close this metal bracket was away from the body but as you can see there it's pretty much flush all round which I'm really happy about. For some reason, this point down here sticks out slightly, so once I've plug welded a few, I'll just tap that in. But for the best part, that sits very nicely. I've got one more job to do before I weld it in though. I need to bare metal this area, and then I'll put some weld through primer on it. I've got everything back in place now. I bolted the black bracket back to the dash. And yeah, I'm just gonna have some final few tweaks and then we'll get the welder out. I ain't been this nervous in a while, but here we go. That's the plate welded up. I'm gonna remove this bracket and then I'll show you the welds and we'll clean them up, give them a spray. Just like that, I'm welcoming you guys into another evening in the garage. I've just been admiring my welding work on the steering column bracket. I think I'm pretty happy with it. The only thing is, with the plug welds, I've sort of welded quite a lot over the top of them so i don't know if i need to grind them down um because they're almost like little mounds of weld anyway as i say it's a new day and a new task is underway i've got my other bracket one of the main big brackets now this one is for the pedal box because yeah you've got these two bolts that the pedal box bolts to and while we're on the subject of pedal boxes whilst i was at Ford Fair at Silverstone the other weekend. I was very late to the auto jumble. I found it at about three, four o'clock, but sitting there waiting for me was a pedal box for a Mark II Escort and the bloke that sold it to me reckons it's an RS2000 one. Here is the pedal box that I managed to pick up. As you can see, it's a little bit rusty, but nothing a wire wheel, some treatment and some fresh paint won't sort out. I've had a good look round this for any cracks, previous repairs, and it looks all good and in the correct shape. Doesn't look bent or anything. I've checked everything moves, all the springs are good. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. I only paid 40 pound for this. I think that's a bit of a bargain. I haven't actually been looking at the prices of them. It's just it was there and I knew I needed it and I thought, you know what, 40 pound, I love that. The way in which I'm gonna be lining up this bracket to tell where I need it is I'm gonna be using the left-hand drive one as a guide or template. So I'll basically 
mirror it so whatever it is on one side i'll mirror it to the right hand drive you could just about see the plate that i welded in the other day and the pedal box bracket sits just along here and it lips over where the fuse box used to be so before i start anything the same as pretty much any job that i've been doing recently is i need to wire wheel all of this section and get it back to bare metal get a little bit of sealant around these welds and then i can start to line it up That looks good, doesn't it? I went for five on one side, six on the other, just as many holes as I could make, really. I've also coated this side with weld through primer because I'm never going to be able to get to the back. I'm struggling to find the confidence to weld that bracket in just on the basis of shadowing what's on the left hand drive. I just don't want to weld it in the wrong place, and even bolting up the pedals isn't going to do anything. But what I've been thinking about is I'm going to drill out this hole for the servo. And then I will be able to mark up this hole with the hole in the pedal box. And then we should be in a better position. I'll feel a lot more confident and we can get the bracket welded on inside. Boom, got me center. Let's get this drilled out. I've drilled my hole, but this bracket's in the way. Right, I think what I'm gonna do now is drill out the two holes either side. And even though the servo ain't there, I can still bolt this to the bulkheads and then we'll have a lot better idea on where I need to weld that bracket in. I was just about to send this panel back this week and I'm so glad I haven't. It's coming in handy once again. What would I do without dad's nut and bolt drawer? I'm constantly saying to myself, oh, this bit should only take two hours. I just jinx it every time. I thought, come out in the garage, put the plate up, weld it in, bing bang bosh, couple of hours. Oh no. It's all good though. My food's on the way. We've got fish supper because it's Friday. Like loosely. Don't have to be tight. We've got pedals and my food's just arrived. <laughs> Lovely jabbly. Let's start a war in the comments. What do you call this? I call it a roll and nothing else. I'm welcoming you guys into another day once again and we're in the shed. I was getting close the other evening to mounting this up and bolting the pedal box to it but these bolts were only going in halfway. They're the correct threads but I think where they've been made or where I've been welding pretty close to it um, some of the threads aren't that nice. I think this one here has got a bit of splatter in there. Nice and simple, that's all done now. I don't even know what this is. It's a M10 times 1.50. But let's get out of this shed because it is boiling in here. Unlike the garage, which is nice and cool. I've got a couple of washers on the go now. So this is all ready to bolt on. Right, it's all on now. This front section goes quite flush, but the back, one side slightly slopes down, so I might just have to bend it up, but fits pretty well. I've nearly forgotten to put something on. Now, I'm pretty sure someone commented this a few 
videos ago that basically there's an extra plate to sort of reinforce the structure of the pedal box and I'm pretty sure I've still got it from the left hand drive so let's have a look at my parts this is it here it's a big old bulky bit of metal this is like um three mil thick four mil thick got our plate and it will be fitting on the inside just like that I'm pretty sure this would be where the clutch cable comes through I'm gonna have to make another hole there but for the time being I haven't got long left in the garage today so I'm just gonna bare metal this right it's another evening I should really stop introducing these because you kind of get the message I'm coming out into the garage as much as I can during the weekend just gone, my parents were down in Darren French's neck of the woods. He's a bloke who lent me the right hand drive bulkhead templates to drill out all my holes that I've just been doing. My parents went and dropped them off. Whilst they were there, Darren showed my dad around his Mark II Escort and he even gifted me some parts. I won't go into too much detail just yet because most of these parts are for the rear of the car. But I've got a pan hard rod, some tubular arms for the anti-tramp bar. He's also gifted me the mounts that go with the anti-tramp bar. This panel, which allows a bigger radiator at the front of the car. And yeah, there's loads of bits in there. I will go through them all properly once I get round to doing them bits on the Escort. But for now, Darren, I can't thank you enough, mate. It's really kind of you to donate me them bits. I have actually been talking to Darren online quite a lot because he's converted a few Escorts from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. And yeah, he's my main contact at the moment who's really, really helped me out with the project, to be fair. Anyway, I was talking to him because I remember when I found this bracket um, the other evening for the brake servo and pedal box he said to me if I'm running the Pinto and the Type 9 gearbox then he would recommend me to use a hydraulic clutch and slave cylinder so before I weld this on and make another hole for the cable clutch I'm gonna cut that off and then I'll be able to weld it all on Our plate is in position. It looks pretty straight to me, to my eyes, and it is bang on. Heading out of the cab into the bay, I've got it all bolted on, and you can see that my circle that I made was slightly bigger than this one, but that's absolutely fine. I've not got a problem with that. And I've now bolted it to there. Once I've done all my plug welds, I could take the bolts out and elongate them holes to the same size of the plate. But yeah, next thing to do is to drill them out and plug weld. I've now drilled all my holes and I've re-bolted the plate back on. I've put Dad in the Escort because he's going to push with a like a wooden stick against the plug welds when I'm doing them just to make sure it's completely flush and there's no sort of air gap in there. That's all of the plug welds done on the outside. They look very nice. I've just ground down all of them welds. They come up really nicely. The only thing that is a slight shame is that I was sort of bashing the bulkheads and that plate together to make sure they were really flush and before I put the G-clamp on it in the end. Um, so yeah, when I've done that, I've knocked this a couple of times and it's a little bit like rippled, but it's all good. I can straighten that back out and put a bit of filler over it. It's not like massively rippled. If we go up the top here, you can see it's fairly straight still, look at that. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the plate on the inside. I did end up welding two sides of that square plate, just a belts and braces thing. But one thing a couple of people pointed out when I posted a Instagram story the other day is that I needed to turn my wire speeds down on the welder. The way one bloke explained it is sort of my welds looks almost like quite rounded, um, almost like a semicircle, almost like a maybe a ball. But what welds should look like is sort of humped because the other hump should be on the other side of the metal, if that makes sense. Um, so basically, it was heating it up, but it was just doing the weld 
on the metal this side, if that makes sense, so not a lot of penetration. So the lesson I've learned is that I needed to turn the wire speed down to allow the heat to soak through both bits of metal. I think that's what it is anyway. You can see it for yourselves now. This is the sides that I've done first, and as you can see, they're quite rounded. I mean, they don't look too bad at all. Whereas on this side, a lot of penetration has gone through to the bay now. But yeah, not to worry, this side looks a lot better. But to be fair, this side ain't too bad either. And we got the plug weld, so there's only a belts and braces thing. Next step I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna elongate these holes to the size that they need to be. And then I'll be bolting the pedal box back up and I'll catch up with you guys when I'm lining up the bracket that fits along here. One other thing someone mentioned on my Instagram story was that our United Kingdom flag was round the wrong way. Can't be having that, so Dad's just turned it round the right way. If you don't know, easy way to tell. The top left, that should be at the bottom, that red bit, not at the top. So uh, yeah, it's all good now. This is the bracket I now need to weld in because the pedal box has one bolt here and one just over here. I think the plan of action for this section is going to be to get this all pushed up and nice and flush, plug weld all of these, then I'll take it all out and then I can do these back plug welds because there's no way I'm getting the welder in there with this all attached. Just a quick one as well, I am hopefully going to see an improvement on my plug welds now that I've slowed down the wire speed. The other ones are all good for the steering column bracket but I don't want them to come out too much. I'm going to try not to build them up. I don't know why I was doing that. I literally done the plug weld, then I started building up around them. So yeah, I'm going to try and have these with just a small little dome on them. Oh yeah, that couldn't have gone any smoother. Now what I should have done is stopped at the plug welds, come around and seen that they've all penetrated through and been happy with that. But no, I thought I'd do a couple of little lines. So I've done one there and I've done one here as well. I did go off track a bit though, so I had to redo it. So yeah, I'm really happy with the penetration. Now it's much better. Um, yeah, even though them lines are probably unnecessary, a bit over the top, but that's the whole story of this episode, isn't it? Belts and braces. I've just been brainstorming how to get this back bit to lay flat. So this hole here is bang on flush with the metal, but this one up here, I can get my finger in there nearly. Anyway, it does push up, but you've got to put quite a lot of pressure on it. Credit where credit's due. Dad come in and he said, why don't you get a self tapper, run a little hole in there and then do it up. So then they'll all be flush and then you just got to weld that last one up with a tiny little hole in it. So yeah. I'm just gonna do this up and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. It should all be flush in a minute. Well, there you have it. Two brains is definitely better than one. Look at that. All nicely lined up, no gap. All my welds are still happy down here. Let's get that welded up. I've really impressed myself today. Look at the penetration on them. Buzzing. And you can see my little self tapper that dad recommended just poking out there. That's just waiting for me to unscrew it and do the final plug welds. Note to self, stop welding in good t-shirts. Ah, it's such a sick t-shirt as well, I don't know why I wore it today. See? End result. Let's get the wire wheel on there, clean them up. How good does that look? I've just quickly sprayed that area in primer. Looks good from this angle. You can see them welds aren't too high, as I was explaining. And yeah, overall, I think that section looks really good. It's that time of the video to put everything back together and just see how it looks. So I'm gonna put the column back on, I'm gonna put the pedal box back in, and I might even whack one of the seats back in the cab. I'm getting far too excited, far too excited, but we've completed a lot in this episode. I've got a steering wheel and some pedals. Like how cool is this? I know the clutch is on the floor because it's on a spring and the accelerator is as well. 
Now, it might seem stupid to some people. Why have you put the seat in it? Why have you put a steering wheel in it? But it's all in the vision. You can get easily distracted on your end goal. I've been welding in plates, measuring bits, grinding stuff down, spraying stuff for a full on couple of weeks now. And you sort of, you know what you're working towards, but you just, you have to visualize it in your head. So once I reach a small milestone like this, with the pedals all in place now, the steering column all in place, I think I'm allowed to get a little bit excited and whack the seat in and have this, because it just, do you know what I mean? It just gives you that vision. Ever since I purchased this car, it's never had pedals, a steering column or anything. It's just had the right-hand drive dash. It's bloody exciting, I tell you that. Whilst I'm on this high, I'm gonna end this week's video. I'm really starting to get to grips with the welder now. I just saying to Dad, that bracket I've welded in for the pedal box is the best bit of welding I've done on this Escort now. But yeah, I am over the moon to be sitting here in my Mark II Escort with my feet on the pedals, hand on the steering wheel, and feeling like there is some light at the end of the tunnel. I think in the next episode, I'll be tackling the last couple of brackets I've got left. I think a few of them are for the interior fan, one's for the right-hand drive bonnet cable release. So yeah, and then tidy up a few little bits, get the dash all rubbed down and that, and weld in them few last brackets, and it'll be time for paint. So it's exciting times, very exciting times for the project. I will quickly say one thing though, next week I'm going on holiday to Greece for seven days, but don't you guys worry, I've got some really good videos lined up for you guys, and they'll be getting released the next couple of Thursdays, so I won't be missing a week of uploads. Make sure you stay tuned and watch them when they come out, because it's the two meets that I'm going to this weekend. I think that's all I've got to say, I don't like long in these outros out i know the video is already quite long because i've done a lot of progress in this video as i always say if you did enjoy the video please give it a like and if you like what you see subscribe to the channel to see more thank you all for watching and until the next one i'll see you guys later <laughs> ain't got the hang of that one yet Hey. Left hand drive to right hand drive. Uh, <clears throat> Hence. Uh, oh my god, I'm gonna be sick. Raining cats and dogs out there. So much for this English heat that everyone was moaning about a couple of weeks ago. You ain't moaning about it now, are you? I ain't been this nervous, you know what? Yeah. Can't even talk. Ah! Oh.